Hello everyone, it's Tanya and welcome to today's video. So today's video is going to be a review for this book, The Old Drift by Novalis Rappel. This book is compared to 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, to Midnight's Children by Salman Rushdie and to A Need by Virgil. So naturally I wanted to read it and I suggested it for the BBB book club it wasn't chosen, but I decided to read it anyway, and we read it with a group of people in the book club. This book was an interesting experience, and I have conflicted and mixed feelings about it, which I'm going to talk about. However, if you ask me, did you like this book? Would you recommend it? I cannot give you just like one answer, yes or no. I have a lot to say <laughs> and the decision on whether read it or not is going to be your decision based on what I am saying and on your further research if you decide to do some. In a nutshell, I am really glad that I read this book because it was something very different and quite strange in a way, like something I personally haven't read before and it was a new experience and it was really interesting. It's also a very intelligent book, which you just feel it from the way it's structured, from the language the author uses. It really is very intelligent. Certain parts here didn't quite work for me um, and I will talk about them. But yeah, in a nutshell, I really, I'm really glad I read it because it was something unique and different. Um, but yeah, now let's talk about this book. I will try to make this review as in-depth as possible, yet do my best not to spoil it too much to you. Obviously, I will mention certain things about it, but like the most, um, I guess, surprising things I will not say, <laughs> because, you know, you have to be surprised. Uh, and also, I will not be spoiling you the plot, so do not worry about the plot. But let, there are just some other things which also can be very surprising about this book which I will not spoil to you. Okay, let's start with the, with the review. In this review, I will be heavily relying on the interviews with the author, which I read on the internet. I will link a few of them down below in the description box, so you can also read them if you want. Now off to the review. Novalis Rebel was writing this book in the course of almost 20 years. In one review she mentions that it was 19 years that she was writing this. It is an epic multi-generational saga in which we follow three families. We follow an Italian family, an English, mixed actually, English and uh, Zambian family, and then the third one is Z Zambian family. The book is split into three parts, which are called grandmothers, mothers, and children. We mostly follow female lines, because again, uh, Navalis Rappel, she calls, she considers herself like a feminist writer, and she is mostly interested in female experiences, and she also mentioned that writing female characters for her is easier than writing male characters. She, it, it takes her much more effort to understand how a man would behave in certain situations, how a man would feel. So she feels more comfortable writing women, which I feel shows in this book. One of her goals with this novel, also as she mentioned, was introducing Zambia to the world, because she realized that the country isn't well known, Western people don't really know much about that part of the world. So she wanted to put the country on the map for them. In one of her interviews she also says that Zambia, as many African countries, was an accidental nation, the way she put it. The borders of the country surround seven major tribes and 72 different dialects. It also included immigrants from Italy, England, India, and she, in this book, she was interested in how all of these different people from different cultures and different part, parts of the world come together in one country. Naturally, such a diverse cast of characters create uh, a question of identity. And topic of identity is one of the most prominent, I would say, topics in this book, because 
from what I understand from her interviews, it, the topic of identity is also a big topic in her own life. She herself is mixed race. In Zambia, such people are called colored people. And in this book, uh, we have a few colored characters. Basically, um, children who come from parents, from, for example, black parent and a white parent. Uh, the author shared that once she came to America, she was often asked, like, who are you? What are you? And for her, this question of identity, of where she comes from, if she is she white, is she black? For her, this question was a matter of choice. She decided for herself, she chose to be black, partly because of her skin tone, but also the way she said is that she just couldn't imagine uh, telling her mom that like her mom is black, but she herself isn't. And so she decided to identify herself as a black woman. And we see the same attitude to identity and to race and to nationality with her characters. All of them choose to be Zambians. We, like I said, we have characters from England, from Italy, but they all moved, they all move and immigrate to Zambia. And once the country is independent, all of them consider themselves Zambians because that's the place where they belong currently, that's the place where they currently live. We will also learn a lot about Zambian history from this book. In this novel, she gives a very interesting definition of history, which I will re read to you. It's uh, one of the characters when he was asked by his newly wed wife to share history of uh, this place with her, because it's like his country, so she was just curious. And that's what he thought to himself. History was the word the English used for the record of every time a white man encountered something he had never seen and promptly claimed as his own, often renaming it for good measure. And then she starts the novel, how I feel, in accordance with this definition, because the novel starts with a white man. <laughs> it starts with uh, Percy Clark, an Englishman, an English photographer, arriving to Rhodesia. At that time, the place, the location was called Northern Rhodesia. He arrives there in hopes to make a fortune and a living for himself. Percy Clark is actually a real historical figure. She came across his diaries, which he was writing while living in Africa. And prologue of this book is very heavily based on those diaries. Actually, quite a few of the characters in this book and in prologue in particular are real f historical figures. We have Pietro Gavuzzi, an Italian hotelier in the book, but in real life he was, was the first manager of Victoria Falls Hotel. The story kicks off starting from the encounter of these three men, Percy Clark, and then Pietro Gavuzzi, and then this bus boy who was working at the hotel, he was a black Tonga man called Ngulube. Percy and Pietro have a fight, which results in a head injury for the, for the bus boy Ngulube. And later on, the book follows three families of these three men. During this fight, Percy pulls off a chunk of hair from Pietro's head. And from that point on, hair becomes a very prominent theme throughout the book. There will be a character whose hair is, I will say, I will not tell you, but like her hair is a very prominent kind of part of her, it's an important part of who she is. I will not tell you like in what way, but yeah, basically hair is an important part of her identity. There will be hair business in this book. There will be mentioned this place, this temple in India where people come and sell hair and cut their hair. And it has, it's a real place in India. It's like an actual place, but it also has something to do with the story. There will be mother in this book who is teaching her daughters that what they are made of is their hair. She literally teaches them, like, I am made of my hair, blah, blah, blah. So hair is a huge part 
of this novel. And when we were reading this in the book club, we were so confused uh, of like, why the hair? What does hair has to do with the book? Why? And I think I found the answer in one of Navalis Repel's interviews, where the interviewer was actually also very curious on this topic, and so he asked her, and that's what she said. She said that the inspiration for this came from the book White Teeth, from the scene where Eri goes into a wig store and watches a girl sell hair, which she then purchases. And then Nambalis Repel says that she was very much taken by the idea of hair being a symbol of the syncretic and the idea of weaving together different strands becomes beautifully metaphor metaphorized in hair. And hair is the way she decided to bring all of her diverse characters together in this book. So hair in this novel is a symbol of these different lives, different characters and people being interwoven and interconnected and coming together in the end. So I thought it was really interesting. One more prominent theme you will notice is the, th the theme of blindness. Again, it will be mostly prominent in the first part, in grandmothers. All three of the grandmothers have this, have something to do with the sight. And in a way, all three of them become blind, some more th than others. We have a character whose vision is obscured. She is not blind, but she doesn't see things fully and properly. And for her, this, her partial blindness is, feels like protection. When she, when this thing, I will not tell you what kind of prevents her from seeing everything, but when this, is, this thing disappears, she doesn't only feel seeing, but she also feels seen and it makes her feel uncomfortable and unprotected. We have another character who goes blind eventually, she loses her sight completely, but then other characters start seeing eyes on her body. However, she herself doesn't see anything, she just perceives the world from like her smell, from her skin, from her feelings, like other um, senses that she has left. And then this one last character, this last last woman in the grandmother section, she also becomes blind, but she she can kind of shed it. She has to do a very like violent thing to her eyes to start seeing again. And her, her loss of sight was a result of her self-indulgence. And uh, yeah, she kind of paid with her sight. For mistakes of her youth. So, so this topic of sight and seeing and being seen is also very interesting. Oh, yeah, I thought it was interesting how she used that. Another interesting thing about this book is its use of liter literary genres. We have a few different genres at play here and every part, grandmothers, mothers and children have different genre to them, as well as different topics. So, for example, grandmothers section, we have magic realism and we have historical fiction there. And then in mothers section, we have literary fiction and then in children, we have sci-fi and genres in this novel, just like everything is this in this novel, just this life of characters, they're interwoven, they flow one, to, one into each other, they're kind of braided together and blended together. So that's also something I enjoyed seeing and something that I haven't seen done before, like not like in my... obviously it has been done before because what is new under, under the sun, moon, but I just haven't read anything like that before and it was interesting for me. Also something something else about this book I forgot to mention is that uh, in the end of every part of part of each character there will be this kind of chorus of mosquitoes introduced, uh, which a lot of people reminds of kind of this Greek drama tradition of choruses. Uh, and these parts 
in the end of every kind of chapter they give you a small explanation of what happened of or how certain characters felt or what is going to happen they are told these explanations are told by mosquitoes it's a swarm of mosquitoes talking uh, I, I thought it interesting because in, in one of her interviews she says that initially she planned these parts to be told from perspective of like they are dark, they're far, far away offspring of all of these families and kind of this offspring recounting the history of their family. But then she decided that she didn't really want this unknown character uh, to tell the story and she came up with the solution of mosquitoes because she said that mosquitoes incorporate the idea of everything they incorporate the idea of an error they incorporate the idea of blood they incorporate the idea of family uh, and Africa and she said that like mosquitoes felt to her like the best solution for the narrator of these parts so I thought that was interesting Now let's talk about the genre. So magic realism is mostly present, like I said, in grandmother's section. She said that she wrote this grandmother's section in her 20s. Like I said, the book was written in the course of 19 years and grandmother's part were written um, in the very beginning. So when she was in her very early 20s and she said that it was very strange and an interesting experience rereading those parts, those words that she wrote when she was like 21, 22. The usage of magic realism in this book was inspired by such authors as Gabriel Garcia Marquez, Maria Luisa Bambel, who was a Chilean writer and whom Borges called the mother of magic realism. It was also inspired by Salman Rushdie and she said that in her 20s she was really fascinated and just obsessed with magic realism and that's why she wanted to use it in her book. Magic realism here has to do with female body so it's it's represented it's manifested in bodies of these women like i said so on bodies so on the body of one of them you will see there will be eyes for example people will see eyes on her and then this other character will be crying all the time and then one more character has something else very special about her which i will not tell you because i don't want to spoil it <laughs> because it's really something it's something <laughs> it's just something <laughs> And she also mentioned in one of her interviews that she wanted to use this magic realism in her book to kind of portray the, her character's emotions on their bodies and the way they feel about themselves to kind of manifest it on their bodies, which I thought was very interesting and uh, yeah, a in very interesting decision and solution for the author. And then one more genre, like I mentioned, was historical fiction, because she wanted to put the country on the map for Western readers, and she wanted to share Zambian history, and also she mentioned that she has so many different interests in life in general, like she's interested as a person in culture and history and technology, and all of this is manifested and shown in the book. So she wanted to share Zambian history as well, and that's why historical fiction is also a very prominent genre in this work. I have actually learned quite a bit about Zambian history. I knew nothing before reading this book. Like, I knew, like, the name Zambia, I've heard about the name, but I couldn't have even shown it on the map to you before. Now I can. <laughs> now I can. So, you see, it 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 was just a very educational read for me as well. And I have learned about an interesting, a lot of interesting things in the history of the country, such as building of the dam after the prologue, which, te which tells you about how this old drift settlement was built, how Lusaka became the capital city, and the way people lived in that region, kind of in the very beginning of British colonization. Then, like, the main plot starts off with building of the dam on Zambezi river. Also she talks a little bit about displacement of Tonga people. She doesn't go into this too much, so you kind of have to read about it yourself on the side. And then when I read about it, I actually understood that when they were building the dam, um, it was going to flood a big part of the land and create this 
Kariba Lake. It's an artificial lake, turns out, and people used to live on that territory, the Tonga, Tonga tribe. Building of the dam, this project displaced like 50, 57,000 people. 57,000 people had to be removed, had to be moved from their ancestral lands and go and live somewhere else. As a result of this, a lot of parts of their culture has been lost. Currently, their government is trying to record their culture and to learn about this, but a lot has been lost because of this project. In this book, she also mentions an interesting operation also connected to the dam, which was called NOAA operation. And NOAA operation was a set of activities to preserve wildlife from the region of the, which was about to be inundated. So they would collect like all the wild animals such as lions, elephants, all the wildlife that was living there, they were collecting it and moving to some other parts. Later in uh, like other parts, she also talks about how country became independent. So she will be, t she will be talking about Victoria Falls conference, uh, which kind of marked the beginning of this fall of the British rule. She will talk about a lot of interesting figures such as Alice Lenshina, for example. And Alice Lenshina was um, a leader of a religious cult. Uh, she had quite a bit of followers and even like parents of one of the characters in this book became followers of her cult. Again, she doesn't go a lot into detail about this cult and people participating in it and you have to read on the site for yourself, but it was very interesting. And then we meet uh, a very interesting character who is also a real historical figure, but in this book he also plays a big part. And Navalis Rappel said that she considers him her kindred spirit, because when she learned about him, she realized that like they have a lot in common. And it's Edward Nkolozo. The man is a real historical figure. He fought on the side of the British during the Second World War. And then he came back to Zambia. He also learned philosophy, different languages. He also learned uh, engineering. And then when he came back to Zambia, he started teaching first in school and later in university. And he was responsible for this Zambian uh, space exploration program, which I will not talk about too much, but just know that it's a very interesting <laughs> That's a very interesting program. You can Google it. And there, is, there are even videos on YouTube of him and his... He called them astronauts. Astronauts. Uh, not astronauts, but astronauts. The Western media, they called him like an amiable... Amiable idiot, I think they called him. And he's, he is a controversial figure. And... Um, Namvali Serpel also asked this question, was he really this amiable idiot or was he somebody else trying to achieve something else rather than what he was sh showing uh, kind of to the world? So I thought that was interesting, that was an interesting topic and definitely Edward, Edward Colosso is a very interesting character. Uh, I would highly suggest you research like uh, him and uh, some of the some of his activities <laughs> because that's just questionable <laughs> questionable but also yeah interesting like I said and so in this book she will mention uh, a lot of this like historical um, elements from history of Zambia later on like more in the second part of the book especially like in the mother's section it mostly becomes about the virus so virus meaning HIV like AIDS uh, and the mother's part is mostly set in times of this AIDS crisis in Zambia, when whole generations of people were lost to the to the virus. And we follow how it kind of started, how it spread, and then we go into the very peak of the crisis. Uh, the last section is sci-fi, and it's written in sci-fi, and it's kind of a little bit set in the future, so it's like in late 2020s. Um, 
we see some interesting new technology because like I said Navalis Repel is interested also in topic of technology and she wanted to bring it into her novel so we see a lot of um, not a lot but a few interesting technological developments I guess um, and how they are used by the government for example so for example we will have small tiny drones which government this like oppressive government that she talks a little bit about in the last part kind of is using to um, control their people so that's the use of different genres in this book which i thought was very interesting and so as you can see there are a lot of interesting things that she is doing in this book and it's really fascinating however however <laughs> I loved the first two parts. I I had minor problems with them, uh, but on as a whole, I really enjoyed my experience with them, and I really loved all the characters, and I found them very very interesting. However, the last part, children, didn't quite work for me, and I don't exactly know why it it can be just me it could be just me because i am not a big reader of sci-fi and sci-fi normally isn't like my genre but again this is not very heavy on sci-fi like it's not like they're going to the space or i don't know meeting aliens it's nothing like that it's not heavy it's just like scientific talk about the virus and different vaccines for the virus and different approaches to developing the vaccine which i personally really enjoyed and found very interesting and then there were these like drones that this other character was developing which i also found not as interesting as the vaccine talk but it was just like okay it didn't bother me how i don't think there is the sci-fi element that bother bothered me here i really think it's the characters that i just like I said, she mentioned in one of her interviews that she found it more difficult to write male characters rather than female characters. And all the characters in like mother's parts and grandmother's grandmother, parts are female characters. And I really found them very well written and I really enjoyed reading about them. In the last part, children, two of the characters are guys men and i really did i just I, I don't know i didn't found i didn't find them alive like i didn't find them interesting i didn't find myself uh kind of immersed in their stories i didn't find myself connecting to them for some reason this last part children felt like the word that i found is heartless it felt heart like there is no heart in this last part it well it felt very cold detached and just i didn't feel anything towards it it felt like there was no heart in this last part also the last part children involves the story of them trying to organize revolution and this revolutionary storyline is very underwhelming in my opinion like really underwhelming because why they're creating revolution they don't know and the reader doesn't know um, what they're trying to achieve with this revolution they don't know and the reader, the reader doesn't know either then <laughs> how are they going to create this revolution what do they want to do they don't know <laughs> everything that happens in this last part is very much accidental it's just a lucky coincidence that certain things work out it's just a lucky coincidence that that something happens because there isn't much really planning or thinking of what it is they want to do or what it is they want to achieve and these kind of lucky coincidences and just coincidental events are very unsatisfying and just very disappointing at least they were like that to me you also don't really know what the characters believe in yeah what is their final goal their revolution planning involved pretty much what was written in this last part is like them drinking together and sleeping to each other like 
there wasn't like much revolution talk it was just said that like oh they're together they're talking about politics and they're drinking what they're talking what they're saying about politics what they're thinking about current situation what is it going on in the country that they want to create this revolution nobody knows one of the characters is actually working for a government organization and she's helping to beat because it's like this this new technology beats and she's helping to beat all the people with kind of get the technology into them so she is working for the government and yes she might be not very happy about that but she's still working there <laughs> so like you see you don't know what they believe in what is their goals and aspirations and like i just didn't understand this whole revolutionary subplot because it wasn't developed at all like it was pretty much with whom she's sleeping <laughs> and i'm just not interested with whom she's sleeping to be honest <laughs> i would be more interested in like them actually trying to organize revolution and learning what is it happening in the country currently and why they want to change it but yeah, it just wasn't there. It was mostly about their relationship between the three of them and who is sleeping with whom. Not even so much relationship, just who is sleeping with whom. And I'm, I don't know, I'm just... <laughs> I'm not very much interested in that topic. <laughs> On the positive side, however, with the last um, ch part, children, is that we do get to see a lot of kind of the scientific talk about the vaccine like I said and I really enjoyed reading about them there's different approaches to vaccine and again in one of her interviews she said that she was actually meeting with a doctor who is three who is like working on this research and he shared with her a lot of this information and so this information is actually based on her real research and talking to actual specialists which was really interesting and it showed it really showed yeah it was fascinating it was really fascinating to read about the vaccine and developing vaccine against hiv one thing that bugged me with the first two parts um not so much the first two parts maybe more the first part grandmothers like i said i really enjoyed grandmothers and mothers and i really loved them but there were small parts that bugged me and this is one that part that really kind of annoyed me in the beginning like obviously we are following three generations of three different families we are following like nine actually ten characters ten characters 560 page book you can imagine that you don't get to spend a lot of time with the characters you can imagine that the stories would be quite short and the reason for that that she was talking about in one of her interviews is that she was very concerned with the readers our modern readers attention span she said that modern readers attention span is very short and that's why she was trying to keep her novel as short as possible to keep her chapters as short as possible and split them like with these graphics of mosquitoes because like these parts you see they're short they're quite short and all of the all of them are kind of split with these graphics of mosquitoes uh and i i to be honest i feel like this concern for the modern readers attention span played against her to be honest because i personally and a few people on discord also mentioned it that they didn't have enough time with the characters they didn't have enough of the story to connect to them and to understand them and to feel like they know them so that was a little bit underwhelming i would love actually the book to be longer i would love to see uh, certain parts of their lives to be shown to me rather than just told about in the future and it like kind of this critique of the book being too short and too compressed goes slowly into another critique that i had for the beginning of the part is that oftentimes there would be like in the end in the end of a section of one character there would be something like an event starting to happen like something really important some like really big event that could bring you to understand your character that could make you empathize with the character some really important event in their lives 
and it would be just cut off. It would be just, it would kind of start happening and, the ch and that's it. And the part about the character would finish and then there would be this insert with mosquitoes, uh, which I forgot to mention, but I will talk about it now. <laughs> um, there will be this like small, small in kind of chorus in the end of each part, kind of giving you a hint of what happens next, but it will never be referenced again and you will never know how this event will finish so she would just cut it off and left it there and i really didn't enjoy it i really didn't like it because i felt like this would be such an important event in the characters lives because it would be a turning point in their lives because later in like later chapters you see that after this event their relationship of the characters deteriorated for example something significantly changed after it yet we were not sure the event yet we were not shown the consequences and how these relationships deteriorated after that and why it would be just left hanging and I really didn't like it I really didn't enjoy it she does gets better with this in the second part of the novel because like I said her first parts were written when she was in her 20s and then this later part was written when she was already older and you can see that she fixes it in the second part of the book because she would still finish the chapter of a certain character of like a cliffhanger but then in the next chapter of the next character you would continue that event but from a perspective of this new character so you would know how the event developed and it's just not it just doesn't happen in the first part with the grandmothers which was very underwhelming for me but yeah i'm i'm, I'm glad that she fixed that in the latter part of the book so that was like my main problems with the first two parts that it's like too short too short i would like to spend more time with the characters um she was too concerned for the modern reader attention span and yeah she just left certain parts as a cliffhanger and later on in the book she would just tell me what happened rather than show me what happened and how it happened so yeah that was underwhelming and yeah the last part was really um disappointing for me children parts just really didn't work for me so now bringing all of this together the last question do i recommend this book do i think you should read it this book is experimental it's very unique it's different from everything you probably have read before maybe not i mean i don't know what you read before but it, it is quite quite different from what i read before so if you are up for an experiment, if you want to learn something about country that you probably don't know much about, if you want to learn about more about Zambia and their history, given that you will have to do some research because she doesn't go much into details, she just mentions certain things, and then it's up to you as a reader to research them. If you are willing to do the job, if you are willing to add some research on your own, and you want to experience something different, uh, then I would recommend this book. Uh, I cannot promise you that you will love it. In my case, I really loved the first two parts. I was invested. I loved all the characters. I found the topic that she was exploring in the first two parts fascinating about the virus and about uh, history of Zambia. I really found it fascinating. But then the last part kind of ruined it for me the last part I really did not I really didn't I really didn't enjoy it I didn't connect to the characters uh, I didn't find it um, I found that there was just a lot of drinking and a lot of sex without uh, like something that I would be actually interested in some such as politics of the country such as current situation in the country their revolution planning like topics that would interest me they just were not there <laughs> and that's why I was um, very disappointed I was very disappointed with the last part I was so sad because in the first part of the book I was so convinced that it was going to be my favorite book of the year or at least like one of my favorite books of the year and yeah the last part just ruined it for me so yeah this is my uh, answer if you want to experiment if you want to try something new um, Nonvalis Repel, she is actually quite a successful writer because this book has been, you see, a lot of awards. She also wrote a short story, which is 
with the same characters from the novel, like the children from the novel, and she wrote a short story about about their lives, which this short story was nominated for Kane uh, Book Prize, like uh, literature for Kane Literature Prize. It's an African prize for African writers, and the short story won that prize. Nambalis Repel she later shared actually her money with other shortlisted nominees. So she is an interesting writer. She is a writer to look out for. I definitely want to read her other books when, if she comes out with something. She mentioned in one of her interviews that she thinks about writing another novel, but that other novel would be short. So I want to see her other writing and what she comes up next with. Um, I also plan to come back to this book. First, I want to read Gabriel Garcia Marquez and Luis Bor and Louis Borges and Maria Luisa Bambel and White Teeth. So after I kind of get that experience of the book that inspired her to write this book, I want to give it another go. Maybe I I don't know if I will. Currently, I really don't think I will feel differently about this last part. Um, but who knows? Who knows? Maybe I will. So I will give this book another go. Um, and I really like the first two parts. The writing is very intelligent. The writing is also very um, kind of musical. She said that when she was writing it, she was reading the uh, words out loud to herself to kind of get the rhythm of, of the book because she was um, yeah, trying to make her writing very rhythmical, kind of like a poetry. Her writing is really good. Like, the writing of this book is very intelligent. Uh, I have no problems with her writing. I just, yeah, was disappointed with the plot of the last part. So that's my review of the book. You decide for yourself. It's, it would definitely make for an interesting experience. It would definitely make for an educational experience. I don't exactly feel very comfortable like recommending it and forcing you to pick it up. But at the same time, I really do think it would be a very interesting experience for you to try. So decide for yourself. Do some more research. Read the interviews that I will link down below. And then you can just decide for yourself whether you want to it or not. So yeah, that was my review of The Old Drift. I have very conflicting feelings about this book at this point. That's why I cannot give you like just one exact answer about it, because I have very conflicting feelings. Um, do you have such experience when you just kind of read a book and you don't quite know whether you liked it or not? <laughs> um, or when you really loved the first like one part of the book and then you really didn't like this other part of the book. I, I, to be honest, again, on Discord people mentioned it and I agree with them that, uh, in our opinion, <laughs> this book would be better if she removed the last part children and she would expand the first two parts with grandmothers and mothers. The book would be much better and probably it would be one of my favorite books of the year. She didn't, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, I'm very upset. I'm very upset that I didn't love this book as much as I wanted. I'm very upset that this last part, Children, exists. <laughs> um, but again, maybe some other people would really enjoy it and would really find it interesting. I don't quite know how I feel about this book, like I said. Okay, that's enough, that's enough. <laughs> I've already said it. Okay, so this was my review for The Old Drift. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope it was interesting. I hope you will consider this book, maybe do some more research about it. Uh, and then maybe decide to read it. If you decide to read it, let me know in the comments what you thought of it and how you felt about it um, and yeah thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and this review i also hope that you're having a very good day reading good books enjoying them and i will see you soon in my next videos thank you very much for watching bye